Hi YouTube. In this video, we're going to talk about the basic items you need to draw realistically. Okay, now when it comes to the basic items that you're going to need, that really is somewhat subjective. It, it really comes down to preference, personal preferences as to what items you should get. But I'm going to kind of break this down first into the basic groups and then maybe discuss a little bit within each group as to some of the decisions you would need to make and then tell you my, what I do personally. Now, the first group, obviously, is you're going to need something to draw on, and, well, the most logical uh, medium is, is paper. And so you're going to want to find yourself some paper that is conducive to the type of drawings you want to do. So if you want to do realistic drawings, you're going to want a paper that is going to be smooth for the most part. All paper that's for drawing should have some texture but the least amount of texture possible will give you the better smoother tin um, skin textures excuse me that you'll want in certain areas of a portrait because you know the, to make something realistic uh, like you're drawing a person that person may not necessarily have a face that matches up the, the fiber patterns of the paper so you want to test out a few papers you know, try uh, the backside of Bristol, vellum, uh, you know, certain watercolor, the back of certain watercolor papers that will provide you with a good substrate, a good medium to uh, draw uh, realistically. And so that is something that you will have to experiment or look for recommendations, but just kind of find something that is not too rough, that's more on the smooth side and sometimes some papers you'll find that there'll be a rougher side and a smoother side on the back and you can experiment and, and see which one gives you the textures you're looking for. Now of course you're going to need pencils and so that's the second group which you can see I have right here. Now you could technically use one pencil to draw or sketch but if you're going for realism you're going to need more than one pencil grade so that you can get a much larger spectrum of shades from the very light shade to the very dark shade. The more variations in shading that you could achieve uh, the more realistic that your portraits will be because in real life which is what you want to achieve with realism we don't go just from black and white Okay, we're, we're not super high contrast people, nor is nature super high contrast, but, but instead uh, there is a variation, a smooth gradation from white all the way to black. And so you'll want to have several grades. Now if you go buy yourself a pencil set, you'll normally have from hard pencils to soft pencils. Uh, there are many good sets out there. Again, it's all a matter of personal choice as to which ones you will like the most. Uh, I happen to have a Tombo, Tombo Mono, for example, here, but I also like the Stather Mars Lumograph a lot. I like the Mitsubishi High Uni quite a bit. Uh, you know, and, and there's just, you know, Karandash is a, is a very high end pencil. Uh, so you might want that one. It's a matter of choice, but you'll want to get more than just one grade. So one pencil would be your basic, but for realism, you're going to definitely want a few shades. I have here the 2H and then the HB, 2B, and 4B, and these are straight graphite pencils. Now the thing with graphite is that as you go to the darkest graphite pencil that you can to achieve high contrast, you'll find that at times the really dark pencils have a shine on it, a sheen when light hits it, 
and it really is disconcerting to look at the picture from an angle. So what you want to do to combat that is to have a pencil, for example, that doesn't have a shine that can get really dark, such as this Kimberly 9XXB. It's a general's pencil. I use this quite extensively to achieve my dark darks, as well as using a carbon pencil or a charcoal pencil. Uh, these are other tools that you will want because if you want realism, you're going to need to get the really dark darks, the real black blacks, but you want to do it without getting shine coming back into your eyes. And so that is why I would also recommend throwing in one of these 9XXBs with your pencil set, unless that pencil set is the Stather Mars Lumograph 100, which already comes with a couple of pencils that has the same uh, graphite carbon composition as this 9XXB does. Most other pencil sets do not, and so you'll want to include uh, one of these really dark pencils. Okay, so that's the second group. We have paper, we have pencils. Now, the other thing, of course, that you're going to need are erasers. You see, pencils put the graphite on the paper, but erasers take it off. So, you need to be able to get graphite off your paper to produce highlights, uh, to, to lighten shades where you may have added too much and then you want to kind of make adjustments and so forth. And highly recommended as a basic tool is the kneaded eraser. This here is an artist's best friend because it allows you to shape into a point, into a blade, to a paddle, just all kinds of things or just a big old round mob of glob here and then you could just t -t 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 tap. It also will do regular erasing, though not as efficiently as maybe one of these white erasers, which would be the other one I would recommend. But I use this for the most part by cutting it into small wedges, and that way I could use it to do thin lines like in hair and so forth. So that's what I would use the uh, plastic or what they call like the vinyl erasers for. But you definitely want a kneaded eraser. And for very, very fine detail, maybe you'll want to get yourself a pen eraser or get yourself an electric eraser, which is another good tool to have. Here's one right here. You press the button and it, you see the eraser's turning. And I usually make it into a sharp point and then you could do little lines or dots or whatever. Very important if you want to uh, do detailed realistic drawings. So paper, pencils, erasers. Okay, now when you are adding your graphite onto your paper, for example, as I'm doing here with this 2H pencil, then I'm going to do it with uh, a darker 4H pencil, I mean a 4B pencil, excuse me, so you can really see it. And I'm going to bring this up. Now if you take a look at that as you're drawing, if you're going for realism, you might realize that a person's face does not have this kind of texture. And this is picking up the texture from the paper. And by the way, just a tip, don't put your finger on the paper and you get your oils on it because graphite gets on there and you'll, you'll see the fingerprint and you'll never get it off. But for this demonstration, I can touch all I want because I'm not drawing anything of importance. But take a look at that texture and you can tell right away, how am I going to draw something realistic if I've got this texture? And this is where we come in with blenders for shading, blending, now, the basic blenders that is often used by uh, people who draw with pencils would be like the Tortillion that you see here, which is a hard paper wound with a point. It's a very hard point, and it's very good because you can not only blend with it, as you can see, I'm blending here and smoothing out the area here,
And then let me just zoom in again for you to see that. There we go. But you can see you smooth it out and you can really get some good smooth texture there. But then as it collects the graphite on the tip, you can do some fine details without using a pencil by using the sharp tip of a tortillion. And this allows you to do some very detailed drawings very lightly, which would be difficult with a pencil. Now the other thing you can use is a paper blender, such as this one right here, which is a tightly wound, it's smoother, has a smoother tip than a tortillion, and it too is very useful for blending. Now, personally, I like the tortillion for these small little details, like getting under the eyes or wrinkles or whatever, but for bigger areas, I like to use the paper blender here, this tightly wound paper blend. You can see how you can really get some nice smooth texture with that and a lot quicker than I could with the tortillion. And these come in different widths, okay, so you can get really big fat stubby ones. You can get really thin ones that is even thinner than this one here. Another thing that you can use, for example, is a cotton swab. And that will do its own smoothness and pattern. And you should immediately tell that there's a difference between what the paper blender did and what the cotton swab is doing. And so you can decide which one is going to provide you with the tone and texture that you're interested in. But you see it's slightly lighter because it's picking up a lot of it here. So this has a tendency to pick up more graphite, whereas the paper blender has this tendency of pushing it around more rather than absorbing it into the cotton fibers like this is doing. And then you can also compare which one gives you the texture that you're looking for in your realistic drawing. You can also use these sponge applicators, these makeup applicators, for example, like what they use for, you know, putting whatever women do with their eyes. They put this on makeup and then they, I don't know what it's called, but uh, this one here is called the soft. And it's actually made for art. Now it's got a lot of black material already on here. So, um, if I was to go in here and try to blend that, I would actually be adding this dark material that's already on here. So you'll want to, of course, use a clean one. These are replaceable. You just pull them off and slide another one on. But I was doing some, some work in some dark areas with this, but you can see how it too, like a paper blender, can be used to just add graphite or charcoal to your drawing without the use of pencil and give you that smooth texture you're looking for as opposed to that paper texture when you don't use a blender. Okay, so those are your blenders, for example, and there are many others that you can use. For example, you could use napkins, you can use felt, you can use chamois, and they all do different things. But that's your other group right there, is your blenders on. Of course, you can also use a brush, soft brush. Just kind of go over your graphite like so. And then, as you can see right there, how it's made it nice and smooth. Really good for skin. I used it for hair and uh, does a great job. And you can see it just really, really made that texture smooth. You need paper, you need pencils, you need erasers, you need some sort of shading and blending tools, I should say, more blending than shading. These are really your shading, but 
You can shade as I showed you with the paper and this foam here and you can blend and smooth out. You need those tools. And that brings us to the last tool and that is whatever you're going to use to sharpen your pencils. In this case I have a long point sharpener. It's a Q masterpiece. And what I like about this is it allows me to create these very long points as you can see here that I happen to like to draw with. So my pencils all have these see how far that that lead is sticking out from the pencil? Well you can do that with this particular Q masterpiece sharpener. You can also do it with the a big triple. It's another sharpener which is half the price of this one that you can get online that will also allow you to do these uh, longer points or you could just use a blade and a lot of artists do that and so forth. Okay, so those are the basics that you will need, the basic materials for drawing. You don't need as many pencils, but the more you have as far as from the hardness, which I say you really don't need to go any harder than a 4H pencil, all the way to the darkest dark pencil you can get that doesn't give you a shine. Highly recommended. So it's nice to have some increments. You don't need, by the way, to go from uh, 2B to 3B to 4B to 5B to 6B to 7B, 8B, 9. I think that's ridiculous. Uh, you can go 2, 4, 6, 8 or 9, and then you have a really super dark pencil like this if you're not using the Stadler Mars Lumograph 100 set, which going to a 8B would be the same as using one of these really dark 9XXBs. And having a charcoal or a carbon pencil is also nice if you want to get the really, really, really dark in there without the shine. Okay, and a minimum of one blender, maybe a Q-tip, maybe a napkin, it's your choice, experiment with them all. I happen to like to use two or three different things. If you're going to get one eraser, make it a kneaded eraser, but it's nice to also have other choices such as an electric, such as a pen for details. Uh, most of the realistic artists that I have seen utilize the pen and or the electric along with the kneaded. And it's also nice to have one of these that you can cut into wedges and then do the fine lines for hair and so forth. And either use a knife or get a nice long point sharpener. Well, hey, I appreciate you watching. Thanks again. Uh, come back for the next video. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I'll see you next time. Bye.